Hi everyone, my name is Peyton and this is part 5 of a series where I create a haunted house inside of Unreal Engine 5. If you have not already watched the other videos, check them out below in the description and you can see as I follow along throughout every single uh, part of this series. But with this one specifically, we're going to be doing a bit more details to our actual building and everything. Um, so I've started off here actually going back into Maya, just really quickly roughing out a, a better idea for the windows that I'm wanting, um, getting in some further details in there like the window frames and all, um, and just really trying to uh, push that next level, um, getting into some of the further modeling itself. I uh, do like use some floating geo and everything crashing into each other just because it, you know, saves a lot of um, actual cost with uh, not having to have anything actually sewn together and all. Um, it's totally fine, especially if you're using like trim sheets or anything like that to texture uh, your stuff like this. Um, it'll be really useful and uh, yeah, just quick for iteration as well. And then I'm also going to be placing a plane in here, and this is just going to be for my uh, window glass itself. I'll have it semi-transparent, but I'm going to be doing some uh, blinds or curtains inside um, to kind of get that effect. Uh, but the main thing now, uh, since I'll probably have this as one asset piece, is I actually uh, assigned material IDs to the three different locations for the different materials um, that I'm wanting to place throughout. And so now I'm just going to bring it into Unreal Engine and actually update it uh, with the materials and all um, with that as well. Uh, but materials IDs, of course, are really nice because you can have the, uh, the actual materials on your different parts of your mesh and everything and it still be one instance uh, that you can basically copy throughout your space. So now I'm just updating it um, throughout the space as well as adjusting the uh, missive that I had and now I really want to quickly also block in my door frame. Um, so the door was just an initial block out and again still um, just going to make a simple door and uh, just get them an approximate size and all. Um, the nice thing about this actual environment that I'm making is I'm not planning to have an interior space. So uh, I can not have to worry as much with the uh, actual scale of anything inside. And um, so as we're just worrying about the facade for both the door as well as the windows, uh, it'll be really nice because we can just, um, yeah, focus on how it looks from uh, distance as well as from this exterior space. And we don't have to worry about any of that. So um, just, again, going to take a, a sphere real quick and actually throw in a door handle. Um, then I think one of the main things, especially when with modeling, even if you're keeping things simple, just to make sure that things feel like they're connected to each other, is really making sure that the supporting um, kind of instance between one model and another has that understanding of how they're connecting. I think that's one of the most valuable points of actually like making sure that stuff doesn't feel um, flat and it feels a little bit more realistic is uh, really just getting that connection point. So making sure with my door frame, of course, and my actual door handle and all, that it has that little support uh, like plate basically on the, the front. So um, now bring it into Unreal Engine again and just placing it to the new location. My materials and everything are uh, just quickly being thrown on right now. I'm not too worried about any of that. Um, and then again, what I'm doing here is I just want to get a further pass with some of my uh, trim up top. Um, this will be really helpful for uh, basically just yeah the the final read from a distance um, and as you notice with that outcropping I do have this little banister that kind of runs on the outside uh, forgot the name of them but uh, basically just getting some simple details of that in as well um, it's again going to be up at the top of the house and everything so we don't have to worry too much about uh, the intensity of the details and um, how it is with uh, scale or metrics so I really want it to just kind of feel right um, in that space and make sure that it's proportionate to everything else that I already have. Um, so I just started with a simple cube and kind of just cutting it up until um, we get to the look that I'm wanting. Um, and yeah, so now I'm going to make that little inlay uh, design and the details that kind of go in. You don't have to like make the whole thing at once. You can just start with something simple like a, a basic shape like you see here get the overall kind of look that it has down 
um, and the the idea behind it as you see and now I have that shape and it looks like pretty good and especially when we get to a distance um, this is gonna work perfect so now that I have one of them and it's already figured out all I have to do is just duplicate it over and over um, kind of connect it up and um, yeah it's gonna be really easy to uh, work with this workflow so um, yeah, it doesn't always have to be where you work on it all at once. You can just, of course, uh, do something like this. It works totally fine. Um, and now, of course, we're going to actually bring it over into the engine. So now that we see this, we can see up here, I still have my block out initial ones that we placed up there. Going to get rid of those and actually place in my new banister. Um, can tell that the scale is a little bit off. I'll probably adjust that some. Um, but the main thing is to get it in to Unreal as quickly as possible, really see what it looks like, um, and then you can really iterate upon that. If you spend so much time modeling um, and staying away from the engine and the final look um, and not seeing everything together, it can be a little bit, uh, yeah, just like alienating where, um, you know, you, you get a really awesome model in here, but then you take it into the engine and it doesn't work with anything else. Um, so I definitely think, you know, that's something that you want to do is getting those passes in and getting updates into the engine so you can constantly see your updates um, and see how they're working together and if they're unified or not. So I actually decided to take the banister and the actual column and have them separate. That way I can control a little bit more um, the, the look of it. And I think this will work slightly better for what I'm trying to go for um, with it. Um, because otherwise it would definitely have to be a little bit more kit wise. Uh, one other method I could have also done is actually just make this to be the exact shape of um, this roof, which is I'm basically going to show here um, where I'm just building it out to match with this piece. And then we just kind of take that piece in instead. And so instead of thinking of it as a mod kit, I'm like, okay, it's only being used these three times uh, for this rooftop. Uh, maybe it makes more sense if I just have it a little bit more customized, then I can control it a bit more as well. Um, might be more intensive because I have to do more in here, um, but I think in the end it's going to be easier to kind of uh, work with. Um, so yeah, I think just having it all as one in here is going to be a little bit uh, nicer in that way. I can just export it out as one piece, get rid of all of these instances, and then bring it in and uh, yeah, should just nicely snap onto that same location. So um, there'll be a little bit of tweaking, but I think it's gonna look great from distance, which um, yeah, so don't have to worry about it too much, um, especially with the location that it's at. Um, so definitely also think about it uh, when you're working like smartly with so some of this stuff, trying to be efficient and you know, um, really do factor in where is it in the space? Is it in the player space? Um, you know, how close can you get to it? How close is your camera going to get to it? Um, that way you're not spending a ton of time on tiny details for something that you're not necessarily going to see up close. Um, so yeah, just wanting to really quickly actually throw in a glass material. Um, this one's super simple and it's basically just transparency and, uh, yeah, just wanted to have it in there, um, to you so you can get a, a simpler look with it. Um, and I have an actual uh, tutorial on my channel as well, going over some glass and how to set up something like this that's actually a little bit more complex. So feel free to check that out as well. Um, but yeah, so now we have our windows in here. We have our door in here. Let's actually get some quick vegetation. So um, these are a couple of assets that I just kind of blocked out inside of Speedtree. And I'm going to start simple with uh, just a bush or two and then some grass. And I do want to go ahead and get rid of these uh, rocks or fake bushes that I had before. Um, but I'm gonna start with the big reed for the bushes. So gonna think about the largest bushes that are taking up the space first, um, and then kind of work down with the overall size. So as you see here, I have the, the larger bushes that are filling up some of the corners and all. I'm still thinking about my composition, but the main goal of this house is, you know, to have that abandoned look and have the overgrowth that kind of comes into play with, um, you know, the, the tree and everything. It's, it's very much abandoned. So 
I do want to sell that. I don't want it to be too manicured. Um, so there is going to be a lot of just overgrowth in general, um, kind of around this space. And again, I don't have any like, uh, materials or anything on this actual bush right now. Uh, it's basically just a, a base color applied to my um, mesh that I have and I'll update that later on. Um, but it's really for the shape and of course once we have this in here, uh, the initial shape, when we come back later on and actually replace it, it's going to just update everywhere and it'll be great. Um, so. Yeah, it might look slightly different, but overall, if you keep the same forms and shapes, um, it's going to look pretty much the same. Um, so again, I'm taking my time with this. I don't try to rush too quickly with just like uh, kind of plastering them everywhere um, because you don't want it to feel procedural. Uh, you don't want it to uh, kind of just have that randomness effect. So I am trying to make it feel uh, kind of purposeful with, you know, where the bushes are placed. Um, and really just thinking about that. So now, um, what I'm doing is just getting rid of some of those actual, uh, kind of stepping stones up front. Uh, we don't need those right now. Might place that into the actual material and, uh, we're going to jump over to my, uh, foliage tool and actually throw in some of the, uh, speed tree grass that I just created. Um, so yeah, these two assets are very simple, just kind of main shapes. There's no transparency on them or anything. Um, they're just some geo, uh, basically, but, uh, it's to get the, the overall read, I start first with like a rough blanket past of it. Um, and we'll come back in a second and actually put some, you know, more variables with the height and all. Um, I think that's one of the biggest things with grass, uh, definitely is making sure that you're not keeping it to one height, uh, especially with the vegetation tool, having it all flat and clean, definitely makes it feel manicured so doing something like this where you kind of come in with this initial pass you have some um, size randomness to it but not too intense because uh, it can get a little bit crazy um, and now that I've kind of done that initial blanket pass coming in with some smaller uh, so I basically just changed the scale of it and uh, come in and paint along the edges um, of my path and everything some smaller grass uh, because you know generally it would either be growing um, newer in that area or be growing uh, just less uh, with height and all. So trying to think about, uh, you know, the actual elements of how all this stuff works together and how it grows um, definitely helps as well. But uh, yeah, just painting in that. And now I have my larger grass that I want to start to place in. This is going to be placed around the uh, taller elements, like some of the fence and the the house and everything um, so it is going to be um, in general yeah kind of a, a very weed like uh, grass um, it's not intended to be placed everywhere um, but it's just yeah really that accent grass that I'm placing around and uh, highlighting some areas really just trying to break up the manicured look I want it to feel very wild or and organic um, you know think about where some of it would really clump up, um, have some randomness to it, but also still be purposeful uh, with it as well. Um, thinking about, yeah, everything um, with that. So yeah, just kind of working through, um, seeing how it looks as well with my actual camera, the, the location and seeing, um, you know, like, does this bush work in this place and all, uh, especially since I'm really focusing on this one shot uh, I want to make sure that I'm really kind of manicuring and curating the the shot and environment for it. And also I might factor in some like actual video pans moving into the space. Uh, so that's why you see some uh, actual trees kind of behind the camera space as well. Because I might eventually, you know, have some of the uh, kind of fly throughs uh, of there. So um, I feel like some of the, my depth wasn't there. So I'm just pushing some bushes and trees in the back area as well. Um, but I think in general, we're getting a pretty solid look to our house. Um, and yeah, that's about it for this video. Uh, and hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.